A lot going on with uh, Mr. Donald Trump and his DeFi platform, or I should say the Trump family DeFi platform. We'll break it all down. I think it'll give you guys some insights on where this is going. I want to go over to Tangem and thank them for our sponsorship on this episode. All you have to do is just go over to Tangem.com, order the three-card set, this is one of the most secure and the easiest ways to set up self-custody that is out there, bar none. Get the three-card set. That way you've got a backup. Use our discount code. You'll get in, start your self-custody uh, journey, and do it with Tangem. All right, let's get into a couple of clips here. I want to start with a clip from CNBC, and this is actually them talking about tokenomics. Now, I don't think I would have ever thought that would happen, but yes, CNBC is talking about Trump tokenomics. Listen in. Last night, Donald Trump unveiled his family's new crypto platform during a more than two hour live stream on X hosted from his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida. Never actually talked about the project during his 40 minute portion of the conversation. Instead, he handed off the mic to his sons and other members of his inner circle who were all on the leadership team for World Liberty Financial. Now in terms of the org chart, Trump's three sons, Eric, Donald Jr. and Barron are all on the founding team along with his longtime friend and real estate executive, Steve Whitney as well as his sons, Alex and Zach Witkoff. 20% of these WLFI tokens will be allotted to the founding team, including the Trumps. 17% of tokens are set aside for user rewards, and the remaining 63% will be made available for the public to purchase. However, it's unclear if anyone will actually be able to cash out of those tokens, non-transferable, and only meant to be used to vote on matters related to the platform. They also don't provide any dividends or other distributions. An earlier draft of an internal project memo leaked to the press had the founder's shares at 70%, sparking concerns that this would be little more than a get-rich-quick scheme. All right, so as you can see, tokenomics, that was the more amazing thing, I think, the fact that we got CNBC breaking that down. I want to go over to the Spaces audio from uh, Twitter, and kind of you'll learn a little bit more about what they were trying to do. I think, obviously, with Trump, it was more about draw. They were using him to get a lot of people uh, and their attention, and it worked. But uh, listen in to what they had to say. I think this might really make a few uh, journalists cry when they realize that they have it just so wrong. Fake media will fail once again. The answer is yes. There will be a token. WLFI will not will be non-transferable and do not provide any right of any economic rights such as dividends or other distributions. And we only want eligible people. So this means not people that are motivated simply by an expectation for resale for profit. So who, who can buy it? Okay, great question. So we've decided that it's prudent to limit the token sales to certain persons who would be eligible to participate. So that means that U.S. persons may only participate in a potential token sale if they have been reasonably verified as accredited investors. We need to cap that voting at 5%. So regardless of how many uh, tokens somebody, right. somebody holds, they will not actually be able to exercise a vote in excess of 5%. What was reported prior was far different from this. Not through you guys. Shocker. Of course. They got it wrong. So you know, this is just kind of the, the sentiment coming in from X, people not too happy about that. So uh, all of that playing into it. I've got a few more clips I want to get into. One, of course, is Trump talking about crypto, but doing it in more of a FUD mechanism. And I just want to kind of package this together. Let's go to this clip. Why is it so important for America to lead in cryptocurrency adoption and innovation? Well, it's crypto, it's AI, it's so right. many other things. You know, it needs tremendous electricity capability beyond anything I've ever heard. It never made mm -hmm. sense to me, but this is what it needs. Who would think that? You need twice the electricity we already have, but I'll make it possible to create tremendous amounts of electricity very rapidly. But people don't know that. People don't know that you need double the electricity of what we already have. It's part of the game. We want to have a great country. We want to, want to stay at the top. Obviously, Trump not as uh, versed on crypto as I thought he would be. Obviously, there's a lot of different crypto projects out there that require no electricity or very little. Solana, Ethereum, etc. All kind of flow into that. And of course, if you look at even Bitcoin mining to a certain extent, most of these miners are trying to lower their costs. So they're actually going into alternative energy, which is better for the economy. So I think that is one factor that he's going to have to get straight on and really understanding that. Eventually, he's going to be pressed on this. 
The other clip I want to go to is him talking about the NFT collection. Listen to what he has to say. First and foremost, were the NFTs um, a big part of the story, of your story, of how you came to see the value in digital assets? Um, a little bit because so many people paid. I wasn't overly interested in it, to be honest, but uh, with through crypto, and it was a massive majority, a massive majority. And I was a little surprised by that. And that was a while ago now, and it opened my eyes. And that taught me a little bit about what, what you love. It was incredible. We did the NFTs. It was so cool. People said, don't do it. Don't do it. You're not going to. I'm sure. And we did it, and it sold. So a master salesman, as always, Trump is going to go where the market dollars go. And I think the NFT project kind of shows that. So I don't know that he's truly interested in crypto. But based on these things, he's interested in what it brings financially and the opportunity as a business from an entrepreneurial standpoint. I get that. And I think that's what a lot of people are, are invested and in, uh, believing. All right. So I want to jump to one more clip here. This is Joe Kernan over on CBC talking about, of course, Mr. Trump. Take a look. Honestly, if Trump walked on water, the headline at Drudge would be that, that Trump can't swim. But they made him out to be the most ignorant uh, person about crypto that, that just got all bogged down and knew none of the details. How bad was, was the X uh, presentation? In terms of this project in particular, he is not, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's not polling all that well with the with the crypto community. They really appreciate a lot of what he had to say in Nashville and at other events, a yeah. lot of things that were said in support of the industry. But in terms of this crypto project, there are a lot of concerns around the leadership team, around the code. He just didn't talk about the project. And I think that that was one of the biggest concerns. It took the well, last five minutes to get any sort of material details. But if, if a crypto expert started throwing questions at me, I guarantee you my answers would be cringe. What we're looking at here is not a DeFi platform that necessarily is for the people, obviously not with the fact that we've got credit investing, can't do anything with it. So there are some problems with this. Now you look at who else is involved. This is of course, Baron Trump. He's involved according to his father. He's also in and understands this stuff. And again, I don't think Donald Trump understands what's going on within this technology. He just looks at it. Okay. My sons and my kid is now starting to uh, operate within this. But at the same time, I think he needs to kind of remember, this is something that is very, very critical for the future of Web3 and really the future of crypto in general. So he needs to get caught up on a lot of this. Here's Wendy O. Trump is bullish on crypto. That's all I need to know. Interesting. All right. So as you can see, I would stay away from WLFI. Let's focus on some of the framework around it, Aave, Ethereum, et cetera. ETH could be on the verge of a breakout right now. I don't know. Maybe it's going to get into a position right now. A lot of people have been kind of pointing on this funny cliff uh, right there about ETH trying to move because it has been very slow and non-responsive every time it gets around 26, 2700. But maybe we've got a, an opening here for sure. I want to go to another clip though and take a look quickly over here at uh, the Ethereum sentiment. And is this the time to buy? Take a look. What's next for crypto investing after ETFs? So what, what have you learned? Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, but what I'm hearing a lot is that investors on the institutional side and advisors are really not as focused as I think the crypto space would like on the next single coin focused ETF and instead are looking at more um, you know, actively managed portfolio type strategies. And then of course, tokenization, a hot topic for a couple of years now something I kind of expect to go away usually when the bull market comes back, but it really has stuck around, which I think is a reflection of the increasing institutional interest in the space. What will change next year is you'll have more advisors proactively saying this is a non-correlated return stream. We're not exactly sure what the fundamental driver of the price is, but we do know it differentiates relative to stocks, relative to bonds, relative to commodities, and it's something that we think you should have an investment in. Unfortunately for investors, that'll probably happen at Bitcoin 100,000. Uh, but that's just the nature, that's just the nature of, of uh, human psychology. You get a sense of that today as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think once you see Bitcoin hit an all-time high, you tend to expect Ether to follow and then that long tail of other crypto assets after. We haven't really seen that from the altcoins. Uh, Ethereum is kind of losing its luster. There's this feeling that the investment case for it is not really playing out. But Bitcoin, you know, regardless of who wins the election, um, is the only certain thing right now. All right. So is this a bottom? Could be. 
if you're looking at going into something and you're looking for a bottom, then maybe ETH is the play for you. But there are some other tokens out there that will most likely perform better. Again, how does this line up against uh, Bitcoin? Bitcoin, of course, right now, continuing to move up a little. If you look at the dominance, it has been uh, on the move for quite some time here. I'll kind of squeeze that out. Uh, whether or not we continue to see uh, Bitcoin continue to fly. And at that point, we see that flip that she was mentioning on the video there where people might come into Ethereum. But I think there's going to be some alternative plays out there overall. All right, one other play that you might be interested in is Ave right here. Uh, they have the Trump integration. Also, they've got buybacks and their Sky partnership, so that's obviously causing a little bit of move there. And further into this, most likely this is going to require something like Chainlink. And Chainlink, of course, has the opportunity to, and many times we've talked about Chainlink still as a token that I own and I like, uh, is it going to be one that absolutely, you know, skyrockets? I just don't know. It's still one of those that is needed for the crypto space and most likely will be and see uh, some pretty amazing gains. The real estate play, though, is still looking at one out there that we've talked to before, had their CEO on the show, and that is Proppy. And Proppy could be the angle here. There's a lot of work that has to be done that just kind of shows you some of the roadmaps that they went through just to get where they are. And it's still very, very, very early. So all of this could be good for the market, I think, in general. This is just the uh, Proppy tweet right there talking about some of the team that they've got, including a lot of experienced people from the SEC, the Senate, even uh, Tim Draper, which is a legendary uh, in crypto investor and tech investor from Silicon Valley. So all of that playing into the positive side of this. So Hopefully this gives you guys a little bit of an outline of what's happening within this World Liberty uh, DeFi platform. It's not maybe what it was meant to be, but how does that play out into crypto as a whole? What are some other alternatives? Hopefully we answered that for you guys today. If you're not in the Diamond Circle, make sure and get in right now. It's an additional content that we do. Uh, I do a market update over there, so make sure and just join. Click the link down below. Follow me out there on X, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.